a business podcast that refuses to let you quit with our daily 10-minute business lessons for the real world. I'm your host, your coach, your teacher, Omar Zenholm. I'm also the co-founder of The $100 MBA, a complete business training and community online. You can check us out at 100mba.net. And today is part three of our three-part lesson on where and how to start your new business this three-part lesson is all about stopping the overwhelm, that whole feeling of, I got all this information, I don't know where to start, and you just kind of give up because you're frustrated. In the first two parts of this three-part lesson, we got started with the first six steps that you need to focus on and just get done so you can get over your overwhelm and start having a business on your hands. If you haven't listened to part one and part two, go back and listen to those two parts because part three is kind of not going to make sense because everything builds upon each other. If you're all listened up, then let's get down to business and get going with part three. Today's episode of the $100 MBA show is sponsored by HostGator. HostGator is the hosting solution that we use here at the $100 MBA and Webinar Ninja. We love their 24-7 live support via chat, phone, and email. They have everything you need from one-click WordPress installs to registering your domain name to design services to marketing services. They got you covered. And best of all, HostGator is giving every listener of the $100 MBA show a 30% discount. All you got to do is visit HostGator.com slash MBA30 so you can get your 30% discount. That's HostGator.com slash MBA30. All right, guys, let's recap the first six steps of part one and part two and then move on to step seven when it comes to creating your new business, minus all the overwhelm. So step one is to start with the problem. Define the problem you're trying to solve. Even if it's a little bit broad, it's okay. Just get started with a problem. Step two is build a website. Even if it's very simple, even if you have a business name, start with your name and then you can change it later. Have a simple homepage, about page, blog. We had some great resources in that episode as well that you can use. Step three, provide a reason and a way to collect email addresses. That's an opt-in. And step four is create a publishing schedule and stick to it. Whether you're blogging or you're doing video or audio, you have to have some regular content coming out so you can start understanding what your customers need. Step five is decide on what small product or offer you're going to be offering your customers. What are you going to be offering them? And you're going to use the feedback you're getting from your blog to decide what this small product is. Step six is create a production creation plan, having a step-by-step plan week to week, what you're going to be working on as you're creating your product or your service, decide on a launch date and make it public. All right, let's move on to step seven. Step seven is create a launch plan and promote your product or service. Now your production plan is different from your launch plan. Your production plan is actually building the actual product or service. The launch plan is how you're going to launch. You don't want to waste this opportunity when you launch a product. There's a lot of buzz you can create, especially when something new is coming out. The biggest day for a new movie is opening night, and you want to be able to maximize your sales as well on your opening day or night. So a launch plan includes how are you going to actually launch your business, How are you going to promote? Are you going to do guest blogging? Are you going to be doing any kind of ads or promotion? How are you going to be actually uh, creating buzz before the launch? What are the incentives of buying during the launch period? We have a special episode on the Hunter LMBA show that we've done on launching a product, and we're going to include it in today's show notes. Just visit 100mba.net slash mba292. Or if you're on your iPhone, just click on the cover art. You'll see the show notes right there. Having a detailed launch plan is really important to capitalize on your new product or service. All right, let's move on to step eight. Once you've launched, once you've started selling your product, you have some sales under your belt, you have customers, you want to serve your customers very closely. I even want to go to the extent that you, the owner of the business, should be replying to all your customers at the start. You can later outsource that to a customer service rep or customer service manager But in the beginning, you need to have your finger on the pulse. You need to know what your customers are going through, what they like about your product, what they don't like, what improvements you need to make. So you need to make sure you're serving your customers closely. This is going to lean into step six, but the other part of step eight, other than just serving and monitoring your customers closely, is you need to continue to promote your products and services. The launch is not the only time you promote and do marketing. 
So you can then line up a schedule where you're going to do guest posts for other blogs. You may want to do some Facebook ads that go to a webinar and run some webinars on a regular basis, maybe once a week. If you want to learn how to run your first webinar, you can go to webinarninja.co and you can take our free seven-day course on planning and launching your webinar. And of course, you need to be in contact with your email subscribers, all those subscribers that opted in for your free gift, all those subscribers that have subscribed to be part of your blog and get all these updates. Email those loyal subscribers about your new product or service and make sure you're giving them a special offer for being a part of your community already. Guys, the last step I have is step nine. It's very important. I'm going to get to it in a minute. But before that, I got to give love to today's sponsor, HostGator. Guys, we're talking about building a business website. We're talking about the importance of this. And HostGator can really, really help you with this because they're an all-in-one solution. You can register your domain names. You can get hosting for your site. You can get WordPress installs. And you get 24-7 live support via chat, phone, or email. So if you're a newbie, you can contact somebody anytime, anywhere. You can use a chat feature, you can call on your phone, or you can send them an email. And they can help you step-by-step through the way. Plus, they got design services if you want a custom-designed website. They also have marketing services to help you with your SEO and your pay-per-click campaigns. But best of all, HostGator is giving you a 30% discount. All listeners of The $100 MBA Show can get their 30% discount by visiting HostGator.com slash MBA30. That's HostGator.com slash MBA30. All right, step nine and the last step of this three-part series is as you're starting to sell your products, as you're starting to sell your services, you got to pay close attention to all the feedback that you're getting because you're serving your customers closely. Take note and start iterating. Start improving your business. Start improving your product. If you're getting a lot of customers saying that you need an improvement in this area, make that improvement as soon as possible. Start listening to them. And take everything with a grain of salt. So if you get one customer that says, I would like this feature, or I think your, your product should have this. But if you have six customers saying that you should have another feature, you got to go with the majority. You can't please everybody, but you want to please most people. And if you're able to serve that one customer by adding that extra feature, great. But don't put it on the top of the priority list. Not everything has the same priority when it comes to iterating and improving your business. Work with the thing that is being demanded the most from your customers in terms of improvement and then work your way down. Again, your customers are your business. You want to be able to serve them and help them. We have our own ideas when it comes to improving our business, but at the end of the day, you're serving them and not yourself. So try to make a commitment to improve your business on a regular basis. Nicole and I try to do this at least once a week. I mean, at least on a weekly basis, we feel like there is something that is improving in our business, both in the Hunter Allenby and Webinar Ninja. And we take cues from our customers on how to iterate. And that's pretty much it. That's the cycle. Once you've kind of perfected and improved that product or service, you can launch another product and service and go through the cycle again. Guys, that wraps up the three-part lesson on how to deal with your overwhelming feelings and just get started and build that business, knowing what to start with. My advice to you, and I want to leave you with this, as I wrap up this lesson, is you're in control. You're in control of what you do and what you don't do. And if you can follow these steps and make them a priority, you can make this happen. But the key is here because you haven't seen success yet. If you're just getting started, you really haven't seen success. You haven't seen uh, your business thrive or making a lot of sales. So what you need to do is that you need to suspend disbelief for long enough for you to see a win, to see success. Most of us, we quit too early. We quit before we get to see a win. So I implore you to go through the three parts of this lesson, go through each step and see them through to the end and you won't regret it. The only reason why you wouldn't do these steps is that you would have doubts. And that's why I think it's important to suspend disbelief for long enough for you to complete these steps. Just have a little bit of faith in yourself and your business and you can make this happen. All right, guys, I hope that helps. And I hope to see you in tomorrow's episode. It's Free Ride Friday. So we're going to give away a free ride to the $100 Bay training and community. We're also going to be talking about when to stop bootstrapping your business. At the beginning, it's just you and maybe somebody else, maybe a small team. You're bootstrapping everything. When is it time to stop doing that and start really doing business on a bigger scale? All right, guys, I can't wait to discuss that topic, teach you that lesson tomorrow. I'll see you then, guys. Take care. Take care.